Your voice is the most influential voice in your life. So I'm telling you, if you want to know where your life is headed, listen to the words you're speaking out of your mouth. Well, guys, welcome to our Next Level podcast. This is Jared and Heather Burnett coming to you uh, from our office here in Clearwater, Florida. And today we've really got something special. Um, We have a guest that um, we've known for quite some time that we've brought on to just share some of her thoughts. And, you know, I I have no question that you're going to hear something today that will take you to the next level. And a lot of times that's all it is. It's just one little thing that you hear someone say and change can happen in a moment. You can go to another level in life literally in a moment from one thing you hear um, if you put it into practice. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our guest real quick. Let me let me give you her bio. So uh, Terry Savelle Foy is a cheerleader of dreams. She is a best selling author, a conference speaker and a success coach to hundreds of thousands of people, not just here in the U.S., literally around the world. Um, She speaks French and uh, does a lot of stuff over in France. She's the founder of an international Christian ministry and is convinced that if you can dream it, God can do it. And I absolutely love that. You know, Heather and I believe that wholeheartedly. She's also the author of Five five Things Successful People Do Before 8 a.m. Imagine Big pep talk, make your dreams bigger than your memories, and live your dreams 90 day devotional. And she's she's written a lot of books, but those are some of the highlights of some of her ones that we would recommend that you check out. So and also, um, Terry actually has a event coming up and you know, Heather and I are huge fans of events and conferences. We believe it's investing in yourself. Um, I think a lot of times it's the number one way that people really get in an environment to make change and make decisions, make commitments to create change in their lives to go to another level. And so a lot of times you've got to get out of the daily norm. You got to get away from the day to day environment and get in a winning environment. You know, I'm always saying Heather and I are always saying get in the rooms where people are doing more so you can do more. And so anyway, she's doing an event. Um, Heather's actually going to be attending and she's inviting all of her followers um, and all the ladies in our business uh, that would like to go with her to go to that. She actually has a code. We'll talk about that in a minute to get a discount to go to that event. But it's the icing women's event. And you can, you know, Terry will share about that here in a minute. But right now, what I want to do is I want to introduce you guys to Terry Savelle Foy. How are you today, Terry? Hey, I'm doing great. It's an honor to be with you again. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, absolutely. You've spoken at some of our events in the past and, you know, Heather has really followed you and just watched your content for, for a long time. And, um, you know, and she, you know, she told me about you for years. And I remember the first time I listened to you and I heard your voice and I, and then I was like, oh my God. And then, and then I started paying attention to the content and I was like, wow, like I'm really blown away with a lot of this content. And it's just, it just feeds my soul uh, to go after my dreams. And so anyway, th- thank you so much for everything you do. But first and foremost, Terry, would, would you mind just sharing with everybody? I know you've got some things you're going to share with us today to help us all go to another level. But yes. first, tell us your story. Who is so that ever, you know, Heather and I know your story, but to all our followers and listeners, tell us who is Terry Savelle Foy. Yeah. Well, I'm known as a cheerleader of dreams because like you said in the bio, I believe if you can dream it, God can do it. And, um, you know, it's amazing, Jared and Heather. First, thank you for having me. And I hope your listeners can get past the voice and <laughs> listen to what, what God's put in my heart. It's, I think I'm just proof that God can use anybody, right? He can use Minnie Mouse. So, but you know, seriously, God's done amazing things in my life and ministry. Um, I think we're about 35, 36 million views on YouTube now. I've written wow. about 14, 14 or 15 books now. Um, we bought these amazing offices. There's a lot of pink here. Um, I think we have about 25 on staff. I mean, we're just amazed at what God has done. But to appreciate all that, you do have to know the backstory. And the backstory is that I was raised in a 
wonderful Christian home. My dad's a minister. And I kind of appeared like, oh, she just got it all together. I was a cheerleader all through school. I was the homecoming queen. <laughs> I even dated the quarterback. But oh, wow. I was <laughs> but I was hiding so much pain behind a big smile. And nobody really knew what I was going through. So just to summarize real fast, but it helps you appreciate what God can do in someone's life is um, when I was 14 years old, I was raped by a guy at a fitness center. Never dreamed in a million years I would lose my virginity on a gym floor by a complete stranger. And after that happened, I just took on this self image of I literally thought I was the ugliest person in the world. And I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase that you behave in a manner consistent with how you see yourself. If you see yourself as worthless, you'll let people treat you that way. So I did. I got into an abusive relationship. I stayed with the guy for two and a half years because of how bad I felt about myself. I mean, he choked me. He banged my head on a steering wheel. I mean, and I stayed with him for two and a half years. Finally got out of that relationship. And my senior year of college at Texas Tech University, right before I graduated, I got pregnant before marriage. Yes, get your guns up. That's but right. Heather, and I, are, Heather and I are big Texas Tech fans. You know that. I love it. <laughs> but I was, you know, laying in my apartment in Lubbock, Texas, writing in my journal, I want to die. Because I thought I'm the biggest disgrace of my family. I just want to run away. In fact, I told my roommate, Teresa, I said, I'm just, I can't bear to tell my family. I'm just going to head west. And Teresa said, no, you're not. You don't even know which way is west. She's never going to get through this, <laughs> <laughs> which is true. <laughs> but just, just to summarize the story, three weeks after I found out I was pregnant, I got married. Three weeks after the wedding, I lost the baby. Mm. So I just felt like a complete failure. And for 11 years after my wedding, 11 years, I was just on autopilot. I, you know, would wake up at the last minute to go to work. I would work hard, you know, but I would just listen to music on the way to the office, come home, turn on the TV, watch it for hours and do it again the next day. I lived paycheck to paycheck. I had no money in a savings account. Everything about my life was just average. And Jared and Heather, I would say that one day I just sort of looked into my future and realized unless I make a radical decision to change, this isn't going to be just like a season of regret. This is going to be a life of regret. Hmm. And I began making changes, which I'll share some of them today, that drastically changed my whole life. In fact, God accelerated things. That's that's what I wanted to talk about today, because I believe that what should take 10 years, God can do it in one year. If you'll put these in place. Wow. Wow, Terry. So, you know, your story is so inspiring. It reminds me of a friend of mine that I met recently, Mike Evans. He's the he's the founder of Friends of Zion. You know, he's helped more 30 million followers on Facebook. He's helped more, you know, probably Jewish people in recent times in raising money to protect Jews in areas where they're persecuted around the world. Uh, really impacted a lot of people. And he's a world changer. And, you know, just like you, you're a world changer. You're out there impacting all these, you know, primarily women who you've been called to and and impacting all these lives. But here's what he told me. And your story reminds me of that he said pain is the price of admission for success. And he said that, you know, the the greater the tragedy, it can be the greater the triumph if, if we don't play the victim and we actually do something about it and take action and, and grow. So anyway, your story just reminded me of something that he had to share. And it's such a great story. So and I think it speaks to so many people that because I just think, you know, I, I really started recognizing this in the last few years that, you know, Heather and I, the success we've had in business and the team we have and, you know, people might look at our lives and think that everything's perfect. And there's a lot of great things, but nobody's life is perfect. And nobody is, you know, void of having to go through adversity or pain or situations and circumstances. And it made me realize that, you know, just probably just about everybody out there has something, whether it's in their, whether it's, it's pain in their past or just, 
you know, something they're having to deal with. Everybody has their own thing that they're going to have to overcome and deal with. And so, and it just made me start looking at people differently that like, it doesn't matter who we're coming in contact with. Everybody's dealing with something. That's right. That's so, so good. Terry, on, um, you know, I don't know if you have anything you want to add to that. I know Terry's going to, she's got some things she wants to share with us today. And so tell us what you want to talk about today. Well, I was just thinking about the five C's to acceleration, because like I said, what God has done in my life and in our ministry, I've even had my dad say, what are you doing that's causing this acceleration? So I just began to really think about it because, you know, there's a scripture in Amos 9, 13, it says things will happen so fast, your head will swim. And I love that scripture because I feel like we don't have time to waste. Like you got to get moving. Whatever that dream is in your heart, it's time to fulfill it. It's time to go after it. So I would love to share just these five C's real quick that we've put in place up here at the ministry and it's caused acceleration. Does that sound good? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, the first C is just clarity. And that's basically getting crystal clear on what you want. You know, I heard Mark Twain say, um, I didn't hear him in person. It was something I read. <laughs> he, said, <laughs> he said, I can teach anybody how to get what they want in life. But the problem is I can't find anybody who can tell me what they truly want. Mm-hmm. So clarity is just one of the single most important keys to success. You know, I remember hearing about a minister years ago. He said he would see people praying at the altar And he'd walk up and tap them on the shoulder and he'd say, sweetheart, what are you praying for? What are you praying about? And so many times people would say, oh, nothing in particular. He'd say, then that's exactly what you're going to get. Nothing Mm. in particular. No, I know exactly what I'm praying about, what I'm asking God for, what I'm dreaming about. So when I see clarity, I mean, actually having a vision and taking the time to write it down. Jared, you probably remember my giant pencil, right? I love it. (laughs) I love your props and I love your pencil. (laughs) We got a lot of props. But it's taking the time to get your dreams and goals out of your head and onto paper. It proves you're serious. Now, y'all probably heard these statistics, but you may remember the professor at Virginia Tech who walked up to random people and he just asked them one question. He just said, what are your goals for life? Like, what are your dreams? He said, 80% said, I don't have any goals. I don't know. So think of 80% of people walking around with no vision for their lives. 16% said, I have some goals, but I've never written them down. 3% said, I've written them at some point, but I don't know where they are. 1% said, I have goals. I've written them down and I review them on a consistent basis. He said, do you know who the 1% were? millionaires. Every one of them were millionaires. And he said, the clues these millionaires gave us, number one, I have dreams. Number two, I take the time to write them down. And number three, I'm constantly looking at them. Well, I began to hear stuff like that when I started making changes in my life. And I thought, if Jim Carrey can do this and Katy Perry and Lady Gaga and Beyonce, if they can write their dreams and they happen, then why can't I? especially considering that this came from God's word. He said, write the vision, make it plain. So I started doing what successful people do. I just started giving myself permission to dream, but with great clarity. Like I even wrote in my little dream book, I said, for some reason, I see myself ministering on TV with my dad. I wrote five things. Number two, I said books. For some reason, I see myself writing books. I even wrote it's humbling to say this because I'm. I, it's not that I want to be famous, but I see myself writing books. Number three, conferences with a theme. I said, I don't know what the theme is, but I see myself having a women's conference with a theme. Number four, I said, helping troubled teenagers. I said, I don't know if it's because of what I went through in my past, getting pregnant before marriage, but I want to help these young girls. And number five, a mission in France. I said, I'm just a girl, graduated from Texas Tech, speaking rusty French, but for some reason, I want to do something in the nation of France. So I I have been told that success coaches say, imagine five years into the future. So I wrote these down in 2006, and I was imagining 2011. What if all these could happen? Well, I don't think it's a coincidence. There I am co-hosting the TV show with my dad, Here's the first time I walked in Barnes & Noble and saw my books on the shelf. (laughs) Here I am 
hosting a women's event called Icing that Heather's coming to. Here I am helping troubled teenage girls who are pregnant in safe houses and girls' homes. And here we are ministering all over the nation of France and all my books are in French. Now, here's the amazing thing. Not one single dream even took five years. None Mm. of them took five years. Terry, I want to stop you. It's incredible. Five years. It reminds me of, you know, my friend Tommy Barnett, uh, that's pastor out in Phoenix, Arizona. He says it's very consistent because he says we are what we've been saying for the last four or five years. And, And so... You know what else I love about what you just showed me is, you know, our our business coach, his name's Tony Jerry. He lives there in Dallas. And uh, Tony, you know, he talks about vision boards and dream boards. But but he said very few people actually, once they accomplish it, take a picture of the accomplishment that you achieved it. And you just showed us that you did that. And so was was did someone teach you that, Terry, or was that something you just did i mean that's incredible that every one of those goals you now have a a picture and a visual representation that it happened and and you achieved it i just did it because it just built my faith to go okay if that can happen what else can happen like i put fake pictures in here this is a fake picture of me and john maxwell (laughs) acting (laughs) like we're buddies and i said i speak at events with john maxwell yes well then i like to put the real picture because there's the proof. <laughs> I love it. So I, for me, it just, it builds my faith to go, look what happened because I got clear on what I wanted. One of the phrases I like to say, I just kind of made this up, but when the vision is clear, the results will appear. When the vision is clear, the results will appear. So my first point is get clear on what you want. What does that mean to you? You want to be debt free? Well, how much debt? Write down exactly how much debt. You want to lose weight? Well, how much do you want to weigh? Be clear on that goal. You want to save money. How much money by December 31st? So it's getting clear on what you want. That's the first key to acceleration. You ready for the second one? Let's go. Okay. Second key, it ties in with what you just said, Jared, about Tommy Barnett, and it's confession. It's what's coming out of your mouth has everything to do with what you're experiencing. I heard Joel Osteen say it like this. If you want to know where your life is headed, listen to the words that are coming out of your mouth. And, you know, this this works two ways because, you know, the Bible says that we are snared by the words of our mouth. Well, a snare is nothing more than a trap, like a Texas sized mouth (laughs) right here. (laughs) But seriously, when we're speaking negative words, we are literally trapping ourselves into the very thing we don't want. So when you're saying things like, no matter what I do, my business won't grow, you just trapped yourself into never growing. No matter what I do, I can't lose weight. You just trapped yourself into not losing weight. I guess everyone will get a promotion, but me, you just trapped yourself into never getting promoted. So we are trapped by the words of our mouth. So I began to learn that successful people do the opposite. They speak in the direction they want their life to go. And because I was so insecure and had such a rejection mentality, I had to make a list of positive declarations and I put them in my little pep talk book, but I just started going in my little guest bedroom with a list of declarations that were the opposite of who I was. So I said, I am confident because I was insecure. I'm courageous because I was so full of fear. I'm qualified by God. Then I started getting real specific, like, I'm invited to speak at the largest churches and conferences in the world. I'm an expert in the message God has given me to share. My gift is going before me and bringing me before great people. I just started saying these every single morning. Like I would go to the gym, work out, go in my guest bedroom, get my little homemade book of declarations and speak them out. And I felt so ridiculous, like hoping my husband wasn't out there listening to me. (laughs) But you know what? my life began to move in the direction of those words. In fact, I remember the first time I spoke at the biggest church in France, 10,000 people in Paris, I'm standing on the front row and my daughter Cassidy leaned over and she said, mama, are you a little bit nervous? And you know what came out of my mouth? I said, I'm confident, I'm courageous, I'm qualified by God. I speak at the largest churches in the world. Why? Because what you repeatedly hear, you eventually believe. 
and you believe yourself more than anybody. So your confession is so important in accelerating things in your life. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, I want to tell you all this because I heard, I think it was Stephen Furtick who said this. He said, here's a phrase that will help you determine if what you're saying is helping you or hurting you. Practice making this statement after every phrase. And that's just the way I want it. So imagine Mm -hmm. saying, no matter what I do, the business won't grow. And that's just the way I want it. At this rate, I guess I'll never get pregnant. And that's just the way I want it. If it's Mm -hmm. not the way you want it, then don't let it come out of your mouth. That's so good. Yeah, words are so powerful. There's a whole chapter in my my new book that I just came out and I forgot to tell everybody um, on the back cover of my book, Next Level Mindset, Terry was able to write a testimony about the book. And so I really appreciate you doing that. But that's one of the chapters is is um, the power of our words. And, you know, that's I think. You know, Heather and I started learning that early on and and, you know, I want to share with the listeners this because I, I grew up, Terry, in a, you know, a, a Christian home and, and in a church and an environment that was, you know, what many of us would call charismatic. And, you know, there was this thing that I would hear people talk about, well, you can't just name this and claim it or you just can't speak something and it just happened. And so they kind of you know, kind of try to throw dirt on really. And and a lot of times I think people don't understand what they're saying by that, or they don't understand really the deep, how how this works. But what I started to learn, Terry, as as I started doing research and research on the brain and the subconscious mind, and, you know, the, the Bible says that faith comes from hearing. And so that, um, and none of us wake up every day and have a little person standing in our room that are saying these things to us so we can hear it. So, yeah. so we so we have to become that person, you know, that speaks it. And then it goes straight into that. We can literally build our own faith by speaking into our own ears. And then it goes into the subconscious mind and whatever we're telling our subconscious mind, it believes it. And that becomes that becomes our habits and our habits are what create our results and and our future. So so I think if people can start to understand that, you know, we're not just saying words out there and and there's they're magically making things happen. There is a science to it and there is a science to that is proven that our words affect our subconscious mind and our subconscious mind is produced is what affects our actions that lead to all of our results. That's right. Your voice is the most influential voice in your life. So when you hear yourself speaking those things, you know, I remember I would say, you know, my gift is going before me and bringing me before great men. Or like I said before, I'm an expert in the message God has given me to share. I remember the first time I did an interview on TBN and before they went live, they're putting the mic on and the guy said, here, you go sit over there in the expert chair. And I said, the expert chair. And I thought, what am I an expert in? And then it dawned on me. I've been declaring this for years that I'm an expert in the message God's given me. So I'm telling you, if you want to know where your life is headed, listen to the words you're speaking out of your mouth. It's so true. Yeah. Yeah, Let me ask you something really quick, just for, you know, like, so you made your book and you started going into your, to your guest room and doing that. Were there ever days that you didn't make it into the guest room? Someday. You know, I'm there's days I didn't want to. <laughs> there's days I didn't want to go in the guest bedroom, but I just started practicing integrity with myself. That I knew that if I'm going to change my life, according to John Maxwell, you got to change something you do daily. So I made it a non negotiable every day. You're going to go in that room. You can invest five minutes in yourself to look at your dreams and speak to them. So I would just say five minutes is better than no minutes. You can do this. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Forcing yourself to do it, right? So the third C, and we've talked about this before, Jared, when I was on your show one time, was continual growth is what has caused acceleration in my life. Continual growth. You know, you you probably remember this story and you've probably shared it before, but it was about Jim Rohn when he was you know, struggling. He said he had pennies in his pocket, nothing in the bank. 
And he's blaming everybody for where he is in life. He's blaming the government, the economy, taxes, (laughs) his parents, everybody. And this wealthy mentor began to take him under his wing and teach him success. And he said, Jim, what you have at this moment in your life, you have attracted by the person you've become. He said, if you don't have much, perhaps you haven't become much. And Jim said he was so offended by that statement. He said he held up his paycheck to that wealthy man. And he said, you don't understand. This is all they pay. His mentor said, no, this is all they pay you. (laughs) He said, they pay others more. This is what they pay you. That's That's powerful. Yeah. But then he told him, he said, Jim, don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. But he told him this phrase, which I know all of your listeners have heard before. But he said, learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said, if you work hard on your job, you'll make a living. If you work hard on yourself, you can make a fortune. I love that statement because it literally changed my mindset. So, Jared and Heather, I remember when I graduated from Texas Tech, I went to El Chico's right there in Lubbock with my family for the celebration party. <laughs> You've probably been oh, there. Yes, yep. have. I know right where that's at, right there on what, <laughs> yeah. what now is the, the Marcia Sharp Freeway, right, not far from the stadium. Exactly. So imagine I've got my cap and gown on, go to El Chico's, and I made the dumbest announcement I could ever make to my family. I said, I will never study again. I thought I've paid my dues. I graduated with honors. I will never pick up another book. Now, the sad thing is I kept my dumb promise for 11 years of my life. Mm. So like I said at the beginning, when you asked about my story, for 11 years, I never read another book. I didn't listen to a podcast or watch a conference. I never invested in myself. So for 11 years, I lived paycheck to paycheck, no money in savings, paying my car note, paying my credit cards. Everything about my life was average until that one day when I made the decision to change and I invested in one book or and then I invested in going to a conference and I started investing in myself. Well, as I began to change, everything in my life began to change. I like to say as I began to grow, everything began to grow my opportunities, my career, my salary, my relationships, everything grew because I started investing in personal growth. So like the next 11 years of my life, I went from ghostwriting books to authoring books. You know, I went from attending conferences to speaking at conferences. I went from watching TV for hours to hosting a TV show. What happened? I like to say it like this. You want another prop? That's right. Bring it. (laughs) Here's another (laughs) prop. So I like to say the key to success is keep educating yourself, K-E-Y, keep educating yourself. Um, I think I wrote this on the back of your book, Jared, about if you're if you're not willing to grow, no one can help you. If yeah. you're willing to grow, no one can stop you. Yes. I love that, that you wrote that when, when you sent it, sent the testimony for the book. I said, that's perfect. I love that. But it's the truth. And as I began growing myself, it caused acceleration in my life. So that's why I'm calling this the keys to acceleration, because what should take you five or 10 years, you, God can accomplish in one year when you start well, growing yourself. Know, so I want to stop on that concept. Okay. So what you're proposing, Terry, is that normally what would take people five years, you can do it in one year. Oh, yeah. So what would you say to people that... You know, I I have goals. Um, you know, I have goals. I was just sharing one with a buddy of mine earlier today, and it has to do with ha- uh, having a private jet, so I don't have to fly commercial <laughs> yes. and, and change and change flights in different places. And you know, we've got a son going off to college, and it's hard to get there, and he's going to be ru- going to track meets at Oregon, and and so we're like, oh. You know, so, and I've got goals, but so what you're proposing and everybody listening, I would hope, because our audience are are winners, they're people that are going places. And so what you're proposing is we can compress time and we can take, I can take something that would normally, okay, that's that's far off. It's probably going to take me four or five years and I can do it in one year. I want you to bring, give me some advice on how to do that. 
Okay. So like in the example with the plane, if you share that vision with some people, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, you kidding me? You want your own plane? Do you know what that costs? Do you know what it costs to rent a hangar? Do you know what insurance costs on a jet? I mean, they're just going to talk against it. That's That's why I say don't share big dreams with small minds. Huge key right there. Huge key right there. Huge key. So when I say continual growth and it'll cause acceleration, as you're growing yourself by watching, you know, videos like this or reading books, you're going to conferences where your mindset gets elevated. You start getting around people who think big. And when you get around people like that, just by proximity, you start thinking bigger. Like I remember just a few years ago, I finally allowed myself to dream of having my own offices. And I was even like kind of scared to tell people that because I'm thinking millions and millions of dollars and I'm just this little woman in Rockwall, Texas. And, you know, but finally I got the courage to say, I'm believing we're going to own our offices here in Rockwall, you know. Well, right after that, right after I got the courage to speak it out, like you're saying, you're speaking it out that you want a jet. Right after that, I was in West Palm Beach at a conference and a friend of mine said, hey, Terry, I want you to meet this gentleman. He said, this is the real wolf of Wall Street. I said, what do you mean? And this man walks up to me and and he goes, no, he's exaggerating. I said, well, what do you do now? He said, well, I got out of Wall Street. And he said, I'm just an entrepreneur. I said, what do you mean? He said, I own 70 Planet Fitness Centers, 30 Smoothie Kings, a candle company. He starts naming all these businesses. That did not intimidate me. It inspired me. I went back to my hotel that night going, Terry, you only want to own offices? Come on, (laughs) dream bigger. So I'm telling you, when you continually grow yourself by getting around people, it just causes you to come up higher. And I don't know if you noticed this, but we own our offices today. Congratulations. I love it. Yeah, that was just two years ago that I was at that conference, you know. So just the simple idea of us hanging around and getting around people that are doing so much bigger and more things than us can accelerate us to get to those goals faster. Oh, yeah. I believe it puts a demand on your faith because I'm a believer to start asking God for bigger things. Stop limiting what you're asking him for. And I believe there's a couple other keys. These last two, I think, are vitally important. All right. Anything you Okay. 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 The fourth key is constant gratitude. Now, I believe this is a game changer for acceleration. You've probably heard that phrase that a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. Well, I believe that. And of course, throughout the Bible, you know, there's so many stories of gratitude changing things, you know, like when people were thankful, Jesus healed them completely. I mean, there's just so many stories, you know, Paul and Silas thrown into a prison and they start praising God. Chains fell off their feet, prison doors opened up. I believe gratitude opens doors in your life you never dreamed possible. But from a success point of view, Um, You know, I've heard people, of course, Oprah Winfrey said that years ago, she started journaling her gratitude. And she said, I believe this right here is the single most important thing I've ever done in my life. Well, when I hear about someone who's worth over three billion dollars says that journaling their gratitude is the greatest thing they've done. I'm going to grab a journal and a pen. Right. (laughs) So I started doing this. And I remember hearing I don't know if you know, the success coach, Joe Vitale or Vitaly, I'm not sure how to say it. But he said years ago when he was struggling, this is like in the 1970s, he's renting this cheap apartment in Fort Worth. He's sleeping on a mattress on the floor, a plastic table and chairs for the kitchen. He said he went to the library and he borrowed a book about success. And the first thing he read said, a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. And then it said, the more gratitude you express, the more abundance you'll experience. So he said he looked around his apartment and he thought, what the heck do I have to be grateful for? But then he kept reading, the more gratitude you express, the more abundance you'll experience. So he said he picked up a pencil and thought, okay, well, I'm grateful I have a pencil because with this pencil, I can start writing my dreams and goals. Then he said, I'm grateful I have an eraser because with this eraser, I can start erasing my limiting beliefs. He said that moment shifted his entire life. And now he's a success coach to hundreds of thousands, multimillionaire. 
but he said it all began with gratitude. So Jared and Heather, when I first started learning this principle of gratitude and that successful people do this, Steve Harvey, Justin Timberlake, you know, Clint Eastwood, they practice gratitude. I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. So I got a gratitude journal and I thought, okay, Terry, go on a 30 day challenge, no complaining. And that's hard. No complaining for 30 days, but instead write something down that I'm grateful for every day. Well, during that 30 day challenge, we had just moved out to Rockwall, got offices we were renting back then. And we were so grateful because I had just started on my own, you know, and we were, we needed everything, computers, desks, pencils, we needed everything. Well, we finally got the whole office set up and we were so grateful and so thankful for what God did. This was on a Thursday night. Friday morning was my first board of directors meeting. I get to the office Friday morning and the office is flooded. Right after we got everything we've been praying for, believing for, the office is flooded. Mm -hmm. So here's my team. There was only six on staff then. My team's looking at me as this fearless leader. How is she going to respond to this? Well, that was during the gratitude challenge. So I thought, oh my gosh, I'm not supposed to complain. (laughs) I'm supposed to be grateful. So I just grabbed my my team's hands and I said, you know what? We're just going to shove it in the enemy's face. We're going to splash in the water. We're going to be grateful that somehow, some way, God is going to turn this around for our victory. And I have pictures of us splashing in the water that day. Y'all, wow. three days later, we got a check in the mail from a businessman up in Canada who owns a transportation company. He said, I believe in your outreach to young girls. Here's $50,000. Wow. I honestly believe a grateful heart is a magnet for miracles. So I think we should go on a challenge, a 30-day challenge, no complaining, and write down what you're grateful for. How's that sound? That sounds great. (laughs) That sounds great. And I'm telling you, it's hard to not complain. But, But let me say, on the opposite side, nothing will delay your dreams more than complaining. I mean, that's really the story of, you know, the Hebrew people in the wilderness. Yeah, exactly. Just complaining, complaining, and okay, we're we're gonna we're gonna stay in the wilderness a little bit longer, and so I'm I love that about a grateful heart um, being a magnet for miracles. It's it reminds me of, and and you just got through talking about writing down goals and dreams and stretching for things that you want to either have or accomplish or be or do or become. But then, you know, it's, I use the word dichotomy. Those are two extreme things. And I think it requires both of that as being able to stretch with big dreams while at the same time being so grateful for everything that you already do have and everything you already have done. And that's, and that's a, that's a principle of success. I love it. Yeah. Learning, learning to be content where you are on your way to where you're going. Exactly. That's it. You know, we have a giant gratitude wall here at our offices. And every Wednesday, my team, they go around the room on a little post-it note and write what they're grateful for. We talk about it because it just charges the atmosphere with faith. And you're just like, look what God is doing. And then they go put the post-it notes on the gratitude wall. And it's just We've had people take tours and just start crying when they see that wall. Terry, that's why we, you know, wanted to invite you on here. There's a lot of people and I want our listeners to know this. There's a lot of people out there that want to coach people or they want to um, teach, you know, um, they, yeah. they, they want to write a book. They want to do all that. But and and there's people that are doing that, that what and just this has been my experience but where the the real the best content is that you can learn from is that people that aren't just teaching it but they're doing it and that's why and that's who heather and i associate ourselves with for our listeners is we learn from people we follow people we study successful people 
not just because they're teaching it, but they have a track record of actually doing it. And so I love hearing the story that even today, you know, you're, you, you're teaching your team there. We're going to be gr- grateful. We're going to create an atmosphere of gratitude and, and it creates magic. It create, you attract miracles. Yeah. It's one of our core values. We have it on the wall. Gratitude is one of the core values. So it's pretty important to us because I believe it's important to him. So you ready for the fifth one? Yes. I'm ready. Now, I believe this is the game changer. And not a lot of su- success coaches will tell you this part. But number five is consistent giving, like consistently giving and being a blessing. Giant money here. Now, the reason I say that is because I grew up in a home where I watched my parents literally give their way out of poverty. Now, that may not make sense to a lot of people. But, you know, the Bible says that the whole earth revolves around the principle of seed time and harvest. So you think about this. Like a farmer could be listening to this message today and do everything I've shared. Terry, I'm going to get clear on what I want. I want tomatoes. I'm going to write that down. I'm even going to put it in my dream book. I want tomatoes. He could confess it. Like we said, you know, you're snared by the words of your mouth. He could confess every day. I have tomatoes. The third thing, he could continually grow. He could go to conferences to learn how to have the best harvest. He could be grateful. He could even tell the Lord how grateful he is for the tomatoes. But number five, he's never going to have tomatoes until he sows a seed for it, right? Well, I've been taught my whole life, if you have a dream, sow a seed. In other words, you have to sow where you want to go. So like, like you were talking about with the airplane, my first act when I have a dream, you know, I get a vision of it. What type of plane do you want? Do some research. Is it a Citation 5, a Citation 10? Is it a Falcon 50? What is the plane you want? Get a picture of that plane and you're speaking to it every day. You're declaring it. But then I always show where I want to go. Find someone who already has a plane and show into them. Like when I wanted to get my books published, I showed into someone else's life whose books changed my life. When I wanted to start the Icing Women's Conference, I sowed a big financial seed into Joyce Meyer because she already had a successful women's conference. Mm -hmm. When I wanted to have a baby and I'd already lost a baby and I couldn't get pregnant, I sowed seed into other pregnant women. I bought women. I bought diapers. I hosted baby showers (laughs) because they had what I was believing for. And then God gave me the desires of my heart, a little girl. So I think it's vitally important that you sow where you want to go. Get when as soon as you have a dream, sow a seed. Sow where you want to go. I freaking love that. That's so good. Cause I because Heather and I are big believers in giving and and you know, we we've always said that, you know, it doesn't matter what you want, you gotta give it away. So if you want if you want love, you have to give love. If you want respect, you've got to give it. If you want money, you got to give it. And so, but, yeah. you know, I think you just took me to another level on so where you want to go. I love that. Yeah. And, you know, the, the cool thing is when you sow a seed, well, the Bible says it's possible to give and yet become richer. But there's three things that you can count on anytime you give. Number one, you reap what you sow. If you're going to sow tomato seeds, you're going to reap tomatoes, Right. You reap what you sow, you reap after you sow, not before, and you reap more than you sow. So you reap what you sow, after you sow, and more than you sow. That's a good promise, isn't it? It is. (laughs) I love it. I love it. So those are the keys, I believe, to acceleration. I didn't just find these in a Zig Ziglar book. These are things that I believe God has taught me. I've applied it in my life and in our ministry and I'm just proof that, dear God, if, if he can use Legally Blonde, he can use anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's what I want to do. I want Heather to maybe share a little bit about just, you know, maybe some things that you've learned from Terry, maybe at one of her events or conferences. So I was last night I was doing the math and I it's been almost exactly 10 years since I first heard of you and have been following you. Mm -hmm. Someone gave me a Soul Ties book. That was one of the first things. Um, And then I started watching every morning 
um, you did like eight things or something before eight. There are five things you do before eight o'clock. Yes. And yeah. so I think that that was probably the most pivotal thing for me because as a mom, yeah, after eight o'clock, sometimes nothing happens <laughs> that you yeah. that you wanted to get done that day. Um, and so that has been so huge for me. And any time I've you know, maybe been struggling in life or been in a situation that I was just like, felt like I was banging my head. If I would start getting up early and get that time, the time alone, the time alone with the Lord, the time to write down what I'm grateful for every single day, the time to write down. I, in the mornings I read, you know, I do my quiet time and I read and then I map out my day which is already in my planner pretty much, but I like to my refresher course <laughs> to remind it. Yeah. And then I write down the my priorities. I write down um, my gratitude for the day. And then I write down my dreams every day. And I have, you know, my dreams. And then I have one for each, uh, for my husband and then for each boy. I thought it was funny when you said the five C's because all of our boys' names start with C's and we, we have four C's. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's like us, that's we have four awesome. C's. Um, but, and so I, I've always done that. And it's from, as you were talking today, I was thinking like all the things that really just bring me joy and peace and help me, you know, throughout the day with business, with family, with kids, with whatever it is, is the things that I've learned from you. And I love that they're so practical. You know, it's not, it's not like some theory that like, oh, maybe if it's like, you know, get a big pencil or a little pencil and a book and write it yeah. down. But every yeah. day. That's why I was asking you that about your your guest room, because I know, you know, do you really mean every day? Yes. Every day. Every day that you have those dreams. And even and especially on the day that you feel like you don't have the dream anymore. That's the day you have to go. That's right. Well, I remember, you know, that phrase from John Maxwell, he said, the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. And so when people ask me, Terry, how did your life change so much? Because you're not even the same girl. I always say I changed my routine and it changed my whole life. Mm -hmm. So I don't ever want to stop it because I don't want to go back to where I was, you know? Yeah, I do. That means so much to me that, that this ministry has helped you and encouraged you. Yeah. So, Terry, thank you so much for um, joining us today. And I learned some things <clears throat> with the five C's. And um, is there is there any up, anything upcoming books or anything that you can talk about or share? Or is it still all under wraps? Yeah, it's still under wraps. We have a new book coming out, though. I'm excited about it. It's a dream come true. But also, um, Jared and Heather, I was going to tell you, might as well tell your friends, too. In January, I have a success conference for men and women. And guess who my guest speaker is? John Maxwell. Oh, wow. Yay! Such a dream come true. <laughs> so I would love it if y'all could come. We'll talk later. I'll text you the details. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I love John Maxwell. Love him. Me love too. Him. Yeah. Y'all, thank you for having me. This is such an and honor. And I awesome. have. Isn't there another icing in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, October 20th and 21st, I seen DC. Okay, I saw that and I almost was tempted to go there because I believe you have to get, un I feel like when you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation, you really are more vulnerable to hearing new things and, you know, grasping them. And since I've, I go to Dallas a lot and I've been to the Dallas Icing Conference, I was like, I should really do the one in DC because I would be extremely uncomfortable to be in DC by myself. But I think we have a yeah. uh, prior engagement that same time. But I just okay. wanted to say that if September doesn't work for you, um, there is going to be another one in DC. So, yeah. And it's just simple. It's terry.com slash icing. So it's simple to get the ticket. And it's yeah. T-E-R-R-I. Yes. With an I. All right. Very good. Thank you good. so much for being here. Thank you. Honor. Thank you. I Look appreciate it. Look forward to seeing that. you soon. Okay. Right. Bye, Terry. Bye. -bye.